This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome. This is the Earth Spheres uh, playlist videos. Uh, this one is on the biosphere. So looking at all living life, all biota on the planet. Um, and you can see from the various um, pictures, we got this beautiful Apollo 17 image from 1972 uh, from the moon, capturing the whole Earth in its entirety, the blue marble. We got the beautiful uh, different landscapes and sceneries contain all types of life uh, from marine to terrestrial to vegetation and plants fungi and and all different types of bacteria and of course we have humans in their entirety and how um, all these different life forms and organisms all come together to form the biosphere so in this video we're going to cover the components or divisions or sections of the biosphere and how we break it down in different uh, parts uh, that all come together as a living system or within the biosphere. Uh, the introduction of the humans, uh, anthropogenic uh, effects and uh, humans as a part of the biosphere, part of the animal kingdom. And then looking at the physical and chemical interactions that go along within these different types and different sections of the biosphere and how they all work together and, you know, with some examples. So the biosphere in general, looking at the the total number of living organisms on the planet, so the whole system is added up in one big uh, number, all the different species, looking at the constant and continuous uh, interactions with the other four spheres, with the, bio, with the hydrosphere, the atmosphere, the cryosphere, and the geosphere, those constant interactions are going on all across the planet with all the different species, and also within the biosphere itself, how these animals interact with each other. So uh, looking in the the uh, division of ecology and uh, symbolic relationships and all those different other topics and subjects that come in to ecology and looking at the natural world, uh, looking at the huge amount of species that this planet holds currently in the millions of different species, uh, but they estimate, uh, various articles estimate between 8 and 15 million species have been on this planet uh, since uh, the start of oxygenation event of the atmosphere, the start of the uh, single cell bacteria and um, uh, organisms that come from the ocean and develop from there. So 8, 15 million different species. One of them is Homo sapiens. Uh, and then basically... That being said, over 99% of all those species are now extinct, and we're just left with the current 1% that we are still know about, or there's more species that we are still finding out and discovering uh, around the world with each year. We're looking at the, the biogeochemical cycles as well as so looking at all of the uh, cycles involved with both the carbon cycle, the phosphorus, nitrogen, potassium, um, cycles, uh, the, mo the most popular common ones. Also, you can include the water cycle as well, and maybe as well the rock cycle, because that also involves different elements within the minerals that create the rocks, then then uh, go through the cycle. So the biosphere, let's start at the beginning. So again, definition is all living organisms, all the current existing organisms, and the ones that are extinct from uh, the past. And we can also discuss this as biota as well. So to get the biosphere to start to initiate the organisms and, and life, we need energy. So the energy principally comes from the sun and then the transfer of energy through various other uh, means and, and physical processes are going to go through the biosphere and promote life and also the promotion of um, cycling of energy and elements and um, matter through the biosphere through those biogeochemical cycles discussed a minute ago. So we can categorize and put in place areas of the planet that have certain set um, landscapes, terrains, vegetation, and species, and these are called ecosystems. So there are various ecosystems all across the planet, and we can, you know, um, characterize them in certain ways based on their climate, based on their terrain, vegetation, and the species diversity or range of species that live in that ecosystem. And that changes across the world, across the continents, based on the 
uh, various factors of climate and terrain and a bit of food and also habitat. So we can look into that. We can break this down to a lot of different things. So we can do the habitat. We can do the, the food source. We can do the species. We can do the uh, topography and terrain interactions, which would promote a certain ecosystem. So we can do location. So a little bit of geography can also come into this where they're located in certain places of the world. So next we can add in biomes. Now biomes differ a little bit from ecosystems. Ecosystems are the flora and fauna plus the physical environment. So you can bring in a lot of the physical attributes of an area and that would dictate the uh, diversity or the extent of flora and fauna growing in that area or existing in that area. But biomes is just purely fl flora and fauna. Now flora and fauna means animals and plants. Okay, Flora is the plants and vegetation. Fauna is the different kind of species of animal uh, that inhabit that area. So biomes can be closely linked to ecosystems but also they are one section of the biosphere where these living organisms uh, reside or have their habitat. So we can also have biomes, we can have location, certain biomes uh, occur in certain places in the world uh, because of the climate um, and the terrain. And you can also discuss um, the types. Now the biomes are dictated by pretty much temperature, and rainfall or precipitation. So temp and precip are the kind of defined factors that would uh, govern a biome's development and where they are. And they can change over time. So over, over the history of the Earth, over geologic history, you've had um, areas of the world which have changed drastically in terms of their ecosystems and biomes. The Sahara Desert, for example, was lush and green only between seven to 10,000 years ago and was, a, was a, a myriad of different river and fluvial systems over the whole Saharan Desert in North Africa. And now it's basically a very large desert, uh, mostly sand, but very large desert. So it's changed drastically from nice grasslands and uh, different types of large animals like you get in the Serengeti uh, present day to a desolate uh, desert, pretty much. So the next one is biomass. Biomass is the uh, total weight of a species in a certain area. Now, the more, the, the, the increased amount of species in a given area, you're going to increase the biomass. And the biomass is an indication of the health of the environment, of the ecosystem, or of the biome. And the health is a result of the conditions. And the conditions are set by both the climate, both the location, the geographic and uh, physical environment. And those conditions would, would dictate the health. And that would be shown in the biomass with the large species diversity, the large amount of uh, species in a certain area, and the sustained development of that uh, biome or ecosystem over a long period of time. For example, the Amazon rainforest, lush, productive, high biomass, high productivity, uh, and a very large range of both flora and fauna. All right, next thing to add into the biosphere, which really is like a secondary or even a, a, a initial catalyst for the whole biosphere, is the climate. Now, Earth's climate in general is conducive to allowing life to prosper with the addition of water and the right uh, gases in the atmosphere and the right distance from the Earth, the right um, system of uh, astronomical processes that, that make up the ability to have life on this planet as opposed to life on Venus or life on Mars or maybe another planet further away. But we have a good sustaining life climate. Now, it does change and, and, and fluctuate in different locations and according to latitude, according to the uh, solar concentration, but climate is a huge factor uh, which dictates the biosphere. Now, the biosphere can also dictate the climate. Now, humans are a fantastic example 
Homo sapiens sapiens of how we have um, dictated or fluctuated the climate in certain areas. Now, I'm not talking about climate change so uh, in this video, but let's say the heat, uh, urban heat effect. You know, a large city that is all concrete and built up, like a New York City, like a Tokyo, like a Mexico City, LA. These large cities would actually change and have a microclimate. So the human element, the human uh, species has an impact on the biosphere and on the climate um, around them. And with the humans, we can also add in the term the anthro scene, which is an era in Georgia history that some scientists uh, promote and say that we're in the Anthrocene as a new uh, part of history, of Georgia history, and also the, in terms of spheres, oh, wait, there we go, Anthrosphere being the sphere of mankind, the sphere of Homo sapiens. So an additional sixth sphere to appreciate and uh, combine all the uh, different variables that humans bring to planet Earth. So in addition to the cryosphere, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the geosphere, and the biosphere would be the anthrosphere, which is just humans and the interactions that we have on this planet. And unfortunately, maybe a bit too large of interactions. And the last main component of the biosphere is going to be the soil and lithosphere. So uh, between 10 to 30% of all living organisms reside or have the habitat or are underground. So it could be just the initial few feet or could be deep underground in a uh, lithosphere in uh, various uh, caves or in between the rocks and bedrock. But the soil is that perfect interface of bio uh, the biosphere, the geosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, and all of the biochemical cycles, they all go through the soil. So it's very important to appreciate the role of soil in the biosphere, not just for habitats and where animals live, but also the interactions with the other spheres. And the lithosphere, that, uh, you know, the, the, um, the crust and lithosphere combined, which forms the upper mantle, is going to be, again, that the area of um, study where a lot of the animals reside, not just on the surface, but the subsurface uh, realm or regions as well. So I hope this explained the biosphere and, and broke it down into its different components. Again, you can go into, you know, a whole semester of just talking about the ecosystems or the climate, the biomes, and then another semester on just the interactions in these things using case studies. So this is a good way to break it down uh, to see that how the biosphere is is in its different components and then you can choose where you want to go and build up the information from there. All right. Thanks, guys.